my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, Thy presence my And every one of you as we gather, this very beautiful Sunday. It's the 13th Sunday after the Festival of Pentecost and Sunday following our wonderful 150th anniversary celebration outdoor service. Last weekend we were very blessed with many, many guests and visitors and members and friends of our congregation gathered and it was a wonderful day and great luncheon served and wonderful fellowship and we just had, and of course God gave us some great weather last Sunday and not bad this Sunday either, is it? So uh, just our announcements for this week are the, the uh, continuing mission project of the Washington County UCC Food Pantry in Irvington is our mis special mission project and uh, that will be through this through the month of August. Are there any other announcements that we should be made aware of today? We got the community drive through chicken dinner. Is that correct? Right. It is, a, it is drive through I believe only. Right. That is right, right over here. So, if you're able and desirous of supporting that, that would be just wonderful for our local community club. Any other announcements for us today? Oh, yes, no. All right. <laughs> Invite all who are able to stand as we open with our opening two songs, Christ Beside Me and Jesus Loves Me.
together. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to us in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All our sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God, his grace for us. Amen. ourselves before the throne of grace as we enter into this time of prayer this day. We are made children and heirs of God's promise. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions and inspire cooperation in times of crises, disaster and war. We lift up in our prayers this day, your children in Haiti and in Afghanistan, pray for their well-being and for peace. God of compassion, Bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, a new school, a new community. We pray especially for our schools as they reopen this time. We pray for the administrators and for the staff and teachers and for the students and for their parents. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the death of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. We come before you now in silence as we bear before your holy throne the thoughts that you placed upon our minds and the words in our hearts as we pray for others.
Hear our prayers, O Lord, and answer them in ways that are best for us. For we ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen and living Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We acknowledge that all that we have is a good gift from our Heavenly Father. We accept these good and abiding gifts from Him, and especially the gift of His only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have our saving grace. Our offerings are presented in the offering plates that are at the entrance to our worship center. You may place your offering there if you've not done so as you enter, but as you leave, and our mission project, as we are reminded, is the Washington County UCC Food Pantry in Irvington. Let us pray. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless these gifts we bring and bless the lives from which they come. Bless the thoughts of our minds and the work of our hands. They might be acceptable to you, O oh Lord. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who gave of himself that we might live eternally. Amen. Amen. surely will share with us from God's holy word. Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The psalm today is from Psalm 84. The refrain is, Happy are those who sing your praise. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Happy are those who sing your praise. 
Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those who sing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. Happy are those who sing your praise. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. Happy are those who sing your praise. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Those who sing your praise. I invite all who are able to stand for the reading of the gospel. The reading from the Holy Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verses 56 through 69. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were able to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
facing challenges. We all face challenges, some greater than others, but there are challenges in life, and Paul challenges Jesus' followers to treat others the way Jesus would, to treat others with compassion, kindness, respect, and humility. But if this wasn't a challenging enough way of life, the followers of Jesus endured hostility. They endured it from fellow citizens. They were persecuted by the Roman authorities. And how would they respond? Would they lose their faith? Paul knew the struggles, the intense struggles and challenges that those early Christians were facing and would face. After all, he himself was writing this letter to the church at Ephesus from a prison cell in Rome. Paul experienced the struggles and the challenges of that time and life. And we also experience challenges in our lives, not necessarily of the same as Paul, but certainly there are days and hours and times when we are challenged by our, to our faith and to our very physical being. But Paul stands in the breach and gives us extraordinary practical advice how we can be against the cosmic, interesting that Paul uses that word, that's not a new word, the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil, where? In the heavenly places. How do we do it? not do it without some defenses? He says, therefore, I very much appreciate how he clothes us for resisting, she might say. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on the evil day, having done everything to stand firm. Stand, stand up therefore, fasten a belt of truth around your waist, put on the breastplate of righteousness, as shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet for your head of salvation and to be offending others and defending yourself, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. He concludes in the next paragraph with these words, pray in the spirit at all times and in every prayer and supplication. Having been clothed with all of that armor, then pray. Paul endured persecutions and beatings and imprisonment for his faith. Paul shares with them and us how he faces these challenges without losing his faith. I'd like to lay out three steps in facing down challenges. The first step is to depend on God. Depend on God. Dr. Francis Collins is the former director of the National Human Genome Research Institute and the current senior investigator of medical genomics at that organization. In, in an interview with PBS, he shares how his faith in God informs his scientific research. He tells PBS, as a young man, I was an atheist. But Dr. Collins' atheism was challenged. It was challenged by whom and what? By the 
faith of his own patience. He said some of my patients were clearly relying very heavily on their faith as a source of strength in circumstances that were very awful. They had terrible diseases from which they were probably not going to escape. And yet, instead of railing at God and complaining, they leaned on their faith as a source of great comfort and reassurance. That began Dr. Collins' journey of faith in Jesus Christ, because he witnessed how his patience had the armor of Christ clothing themselves in God's truth and love and power. Believers, he said, face down the worst circumstances with strength and peace. They depended on God. Secondly, facing challenges is to ask God to give us courage and confidence. Depend on God and ask God for courage and confidence. Putting on that armor of which we earlier read. Effectiveness in life is often determined by our qualities of courage and confidence. Courage and confidence for truth and the character of God who is our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer, our savior. God leads us in truth and power and wisdom. Enemies become opportunities to grow in character. Challenges become opportunities to grow in wisdom. Faith in God doesn't mean we will never experience fear or setbacks. Faith in God does mean we will act with wisdom, character, and courage in spite of our faith. Uh, excuse me, in spite of our fear. When I was in Germany, my earliest trip, to, when I was studying over there for that year, I remember the Germans told me, as an American, I was one of the only Americans really in that institution of that seminary at the time, and they said, you know, the difference between you Americans and us Germans, we say always, over and over, das ist ein Problem. That's a problem. Well, the German mind says that's a problem. The American mind, they said to me, says that's an opportunity. Are we people that say, das ist ein Problem? Or are we a people who say that is an opportunity? This is what our choices come down to sometimes in life. There's a pastor by the name of Bruce Larson. He's a wonderful preacher and has written many books, who counts this as a boy. His family attended Third Presbyterian Church in downtown Chicago, located on Michigan Avenue. I'm vaguely familiar with Third Presbyterian Church on Michigan because when we would take visiting youth groups to Chicago for a couple of days, we would always go to Third Presbyterian on Michigan Avenue for their Sunday morning service. It was a magnificent structure. It had an extraordinary live congregation, and it made an effort to minister to the Chicagoland needy community. But I remember, most of all, you know how before the service began, like here would be the altar communion table, it was a very large edifice. Behind it was a choir of some probably 75 or more voices. And before the service began, the choir director had the choir stand, and several of the people in the congregation stood, and the whole choir did jumping jacks. They spun around, they exercised for about three minutes, which may not sound like a long time, but it is, in order to prepare themselves to be in top form for the worship service. 
they did their exercises. That was pretty impressive. And I can tell you what, they did a magnificent job of leading that congregation, but I will never forget that. And many, many uh, of the people in the congregation also stood and did their exercises. I did not. Being from Washington County, you know, that seemed a little bit strange. <laughs> but it was quite an experience, and it was a wonderful thing. They prepared themselves at that church, as this is an aside, but Pastor Larson says his favorite moment in the worship service at that church was when the ushers passed the offering plates. The ushers in his childhood church were some of the most prominent businessmen and businesswomen and leaders of the professions in Chicago. But there was one usher who stood out to young Bruce Larson. Bruce's father, every Sunday, would point this usher out to make sure that little Bruce understood what an important person he was. This special usher is Bruce Larson's childhood church was a man named Frank Lesh. During the prohibition period, of 1920 to 1933, criminal gangs rose in power in many of the major American cities, including Chicago, and that power stretched all the way down through southern Illinois. Few gangsters were as powerful or as feared as that name of Al Capone. His gang infiltrated numerous Chicago businesses and political establishments. He and his men were ruthless, corrupt, even the FBI, was afraid to go after Al Capone. But Frank Lesh, this usher, an attorney, established the Chicago Crime Commission to clean up corruption in Chicago politics and break Capone's criminal organization. Lesh knew his work would be controversial and dangerous. Many public officials and judges were either in Capo on Capone's payroll or feared for their lives if they opposed him. Lesh, his family and friends were the targets of numerous death threats, but Lesh's faith would not allow him to sit by quietly while Al Capone's gangs corrupted further and destroyed his city. It was Frank Lesh's uncompromising courage, perseverance, that it eventually led to Al Capone's arrest and conviction. Bruce Larson's dad never let a Sunday go by that he didn't point out to young Bruce that Usher, that Usher Lesh, Frank Lesh, the, ceiling, the secret to dealing with any challenge is to depend on God, to find strength, courage, and confidence in God daily and every moment of our lives. I have used this quote, this famous quote of Winston Churchill. It comprised an entire, supposedly a, an entire commencement address at the college in Fulton, Missouri. When he was there, he gave his Iron Curtain speech. And the five words that Mr. Churchill said were never never, never give up. Never, never, never give up. Pray in the spirit at all times. Put on the armor of God. Be prepared. The motto of the Boy Scouts of America. Be prepared. <laughs> Dress for the battle. That word prepare comes from the Latin word paro, P-A-R-O, which means to make complete and to point in the right direction to be equipped for battle. That's what the armor of God and prayer do for us. They prepare us for what is to come. They equip us for the battle. We prepare ourselves daily 
by opening the day with prayer, reading God's word, spending time aligning our minds and priorities with the mind of Jesus. This happens to everyone, and God equips us for battle. The spiritual preparation that Paul wants believers to have is seeing adversity as an opportunity and be ready for doing good. In the early point, part of the 20th century, the early 1900s, Japan officially annexed Korea. Japanese officials announced that on the first day of every month, all Korean citizens would be required to bow down and worship to the shrine of the Japanese sun goddess. Anyone who didn't bow down to worship the sun goddess could be beaten or arrested. Later in the 1930s, a young Korean school teacher named An I Suk was pressured by her school to take part in this forced worship of the Japanese sun goddess. However, An I Suk was a Christian. Her faith in Jesus made it impossible for her to worship that idol. However, if she didn't participate in this act of pagan worship, she and her colleagues and students could become targets of persecution by the Japanese government. The first day of the month came around and everyone in An's school marched toward the Japanese sun god shrine. An could hear her students around her whispering, questioning if their Christian teacher would betray her faith in exchange for safety. When the orders came down to bow down, An I Suk stood even taller and straighter. Inside, she was terrified. At that moment, she thought, I am dead. Fortunately, she survived this challenge to her faith. However, she and 34 other Christian believers were arrested and imprisoned. They were beaten. For six years, An survived in this brutal environment while sharing her faith with other prisoners and guards. When they were released at the end of the Second World War in 1945, a prison guard who was impressed by their courage shouted as they passed through the exit, these are the ones who for six long years refused to worship Japanese gods. They fought against severe torture, hunger and cold, and have won out without bowing their heads to the idol worshipers of Japan. Today, they are the champions of the faith, and I will become one too. Where did this young Korean school teacher get the strength courage and confidence to withstand the arrest, the torture. She prepared herself by daily putting on the armor that we talked about, that, of which Paul wrote to the Ephesians. Whatever battles we are fighting, depression, anger, unbelief, God stands for us and God stands with us. We need to prepare ourselves. There is nothing that we cannot overcome if we rely on the strength, the courage, and the confidence that comes from God. And concluding this as Paul concluded the text that we have from Ephesians with the words, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power, and pray, pray every day, that we might be strong in the Lord. Thanks be to God for this wonderful gift, the gift of facing the challenges, turning our problems into opportunities, and being made strong by putting on the armor of God and praying. Amen. I invite all who are able to stand as Fred will lead us
in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found in our songbooks, at the back, at the back of our songbooks, second to the last page. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Fred will share with us the blessings of the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Depart this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Depart to serve one another, be gracious to one another and loving. Depart in peace. Amen. my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me say that Thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping Thy presence my my wisdom and thou my true
King of heaven, my victory. 